Hello my lovelies, I'm the Small Brit and this is Rip Finch. And today, I'm bringing you a quick speed paint and some additional rambly thoughts on art techniques because, come on, this is me, you should expect that by now. <laughs> What's the speed paint of, you ask? Well, a drawfee challenge, of all things. What's the challenge? Another great question, I knew I liked you. I recently watched their one layer challenge and I just got way too inspired, like couldn't get it out of my head and itching to have a go myself kind of inspired. So I did. This challenge consisted of me using only one layer. I cannot use my good friend Control Z to undo or an eraser tool, just an old school method in a digital format. And let me tell you off the bat, this was honestly such a great exercise. I actually did the entire thing in one sitting, live on stream, which you can check out on my channel if you still really want more. That being said, I thought I'd do a condensed, sped up version for the main channel, with my rambling thoughts on the whole process. I had a lot of fun with it, and it got me back to some of my fundamentals, which I'll admit I can neglect sometimes. I actually have a background with some traditional art, so it was a nice return to some old techniques and methods of visualising. For starters, it was great to just remove the pressure of making something perfect, juggling a whole bunch of layers, all of that jazz, which I think there is a lot of pressure to do with something as easy as digital art, where you can just undo and redo things. So it was nice to just let myself have fun with mark making, which I haven't really done in a while. Despite that specific lack of pressure, it still managed to force me out of my comfort zone a little, which I always take as a good thing. I realised very quickly how reliant I am on undoing. My hand kept instinctively hovering over Control z to the point I was tempted to take the keycap off, and I had to redo something twice because I was just so lightning fast on undoing a less than ideal stroke. As time went on, however, I was able to kind of train myself to hover over the ALT key instead, and rapidly sample colours when I needed to paint over mistakes. All in all, I got into a good rhythm eventually and definitely got faster and faster. It really forced me to seriously consider and think about exactly why I didn't like something in order to fix it. While I maintain those troglodytes who disparage digital art as lazy are themselves incorrect and probably a bit elitist, I will admit the convenience of technology can sometimes hamper you. I think my habit of painting over my line art helped a lot here and didn't leave me entirely in the dark. I actually really enjoyed blocking out shapes and then filling out their lighting and details later. My aim was to roughly get a feel for the layout of the piece, ensure it felt balanced more or less, and then slowly develop certain elements from there. Speaking of balancing and breaking up the composition, a massive shout out to user Archie Noyce, who suggested in the chat that I incorporate some rays in some way. You were 100% right, Archie. They are a bit cliche, but in the best possible way. Such a good suggestion. I'll tell you what though, just zoning out and enjoying the process can get you very philosophical and rambly. I've definitely been trying to really focus in on depicting certain face types that I might not default to as my go-to, especially noses, jaws, all of that sort of stuff. I firmly believe all body types and faces can be beautiful if you know what to look for in them and how to flatter them. In my experience, a lot of people can look worse in photos or fashion because people don't always know how best to flatter their look or complement their body type. Models with unconventional looks or facial features can really shine with someone who knows what they're doing. I'm not saying I know what I'm doing just yet, but I'd like to get there someday. In this case, I wanted to celebrate a big, bold Roman nose. As you can see here, I ended up really leaning into a Harvest Goddess kind of vibe. I wanted her hair and outfit to imply abundance, like a cornucopia or something like that. I've also been working on some Hades-inspired artwork of late, and so the little maximalist part of my brain was turned on and already dialed up to a thousand. 
However, by this point in the paint, I'd gained enough confidence to also just leave things vague or to totally paint over areas I didn't like, such as the hair clip, as you'll see. I enjoyed reducing contrast on the outskirts to draw focus and simply imply the existence of things like pearls and flowers. And as you probably already know by this point, I love sparkles so much. Uh, any excuse to highlight areas, softly airbrush over sections, just make things all shiny and pretty. Yes, please. What was even more shocking? She survived the canvas flip. My full intention had always been to lean into all of the traditional methods, including getting out a mirror if I wanted to quote unquote flip the canvas, all that jazz. Full disclosure, I was <laughs> too comfortable to get up out of my chair to go and get one, so instead I just decided to chance it and wait until the end and hope she didn't look wonky. And you know what? All things considered, I'm super pleased with the final result. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick little jaunt. I had a blast doing something totally different from my usual, like a little reset for my mind and it was an excuse to draw a lovely sparkly person. Speaking of lovely sparkly people, do consider supporting me on Patreon, those are the lovely people you should be able to see on the screen. You get exclusive behind the scenes content, access to the Patreon Discord, and uh, it helps me out an awful lot. Have you tried a challenge like this yourself? Do you find doing random exercises help you with your own art block? Let me know any and all of your thoughts in the comments if you have the time. And speaking of time, I'll hopefully see all of you next time. <laughs>